short sprint course determined the starting order for the safari the Subaru legacy of group N national rally champion Brian Watkin easily secured pole although the Matamata farmer would have been quite happy to settle for second and get a drag early oh, it's real slippery in places on the sand tracks it's there's no traction at all you're just sliding around all over the place the flying lap had already taken out last year's runner-up Lindsay Dowler I don't see any shunting, ramming, or anything like that going on. If someone gets stuck, the guy behind, if he's stuck in a position where you can't get past him, the guy behind gets out and gives him a hand to push the car out the way, OK? Keeping a close eye on Brian Watkin was defending champion David Thexton. Uh, we were actually seven minutes ahead at the halfway point, but we, we broke a drive shaft in the rear. We had to drive the rest of the rally on front-wheel drive, and then we burnt out a fusible link and the car stopped for five minutes, I had to fix it on the side of the road, so our lead was eroded away down to one second. Although it only qualified seven, Don Hickman's Mitsubishi Starion packed plenty of power. Yeah, it's an aluminium uh, shear Donovan motor I use in the sprint car. It's got a lot of low-down torque, uh, just what you want for the four-wheel drive system. this then Clint Neil Eric no TV3 motorsport editor Malcolm signs navigating for Watkin excuse me sir are you still trying to come to grips with this course I'm trying to read my own writing good luck Brian Get it sorted now Malcolm wasn't the only one swatting hard Alan Smith and Tubbs Wanaga Sakura weren't keen on a repeat in their Land Rover special Getting close to a start, and Signs was still cramming. Whatever you do, Brian, don't get him near the wheel. This was what happened last time. Back to stock cam. In the dying stages, and Signs was waiting for Wetton. Suck at him. Parked his car on the wall, and then took out teammate Walker. The race set for 120 kilometres or six laps of a previously unused section of the Woodhill Forest. I think it'll be tougher this year, um, in some ways, but so I think it's a lot fairer on the rally cars this year. Um, it's more demanding, of course, because of six laps. That's all we saw of David and Marion Thexton's Nissan Pulsar, which retired on the first lap. So 28 cars left to chase Brian Watkin, off at 20-second intervals. The Starion looked sharp, but didn't last long. The Subaru Legacy lapped the first tail ender after just 17 minutes. The conditions had improved markedly since the sprint lap two hours earlier. The off-roaders were locked in their own battle for class honours. Now, according to the conditions of entry, drivers had to pay for any damage they caused. That post getting a real workout. Up front, Brian Watkins steadily increased his lead. He hit speeds of up to 210 kilometers per hour on the gravel straights, yet could afford to cruise the final stages. Amidst the traffic, he finished the 120 k's in one hour, 16 minutes and 36 seconds. Any anxious moments anywhere? No, no, not a problem. I suppose one anxious moment for us was your navigator today. How did he go? No, he was good, yeah, yeah, no, real good. Called all the instructions each time and, and kept us on the track. A bit queasy at times. <laughs> Campbell Wright was almost seven minutes back second. Alec Newell was third, a further 32 seconds away. Off-road honours went to Murray Robertson and the V8 Land Cruiser finished fourth overall. <laughs> 